Hello everyone, this is Daniel and welcome to a new beginning. This is the uh, second part, I believe, in this uh, new character creation series. Um, I assume you have already watched the first part where I talk all about what we'll be creating, you know, the scope of this project. Uh, please go ahead and watch that if you have not watched it yet, because uh, yeah, I will talk about who this series is targeted at and how it should be used and so on. Uh, also, you might just want to see what the result will be. So, um, I'm just starting now to create this project, but if it goes well, there should be a part one in which you can see all those things. So, uh, let's get started. The first thing that you want to do with uh, any character project, uh, and probably most art projects in general, is of course to gather references. Uh, I like to use Pureref to organize my references. It's a tool where you can just lay out your images on a canvas and um, I think it costs now a little bit uh, but just go and look for pure ref and you'll find more information on that otherwise you can just have a folder with images uh, I should mention that I mean it's probably obvious but the design the character that I'm using here is uh, his name is Reg it, he's a character from an animation series or uh, ca called Made in Abyss and obviously uh, the character design is not mine so just keep that in mind I'm just using a bunch of uh, images from the internet these are some of the official character designs I believe here are some sketches I found uh, and here's a figure that exists uh, which is a good reference for our 3D work um, yeah so keep that in mind as we go and I encourage you to collect a bunch of detail. This is maybe uh, like not very much <laughs> if you think about how much uh, information you could have, but you know it's good enough for a start and maybe I'll add new images as we go. Okay, uh, I also want to show you that I did um, you know spend a little bit of time to clean up and organize my references. And I want to explain to you how you can go about doing that even if you're not a great artist. Basically I didn't just draw it, I traced it mostly and that's totally fine because all I want to do here is to, to you know, improve the symmetry and uh, think a bit about, you know, the shapes. Uh, so what I did is I loaded one of those images in, let's hide these layers quickly. I made sure that I align it to the vertical axis as good as I can, so I rotated it a little bit. And what you can do in, in Photoshop is you create a new layer and then you start painting, right? Okay, let me use my uh, graphic tablet. So so you could start to, to, to draw the shapes like this. But you have the symmetry tools here and you just go for a vertical symmetry. You place it to the right place and then uh, you work with that. So that very easily, you know, lets you work in symmetry and you should be done with the whole thing very quickly. Uh, as you do that, uh, try to um, just correct a couple of things. Um, you know, here it was quite simple, to be honest. Um, but here, one of the arms is in the back somewhere, so I just take one the one side where the arm is in a more neutral pose. Um, yeah, but there are also some parts where you can't use the symmetry, so yeah, just make sure that you you try to make it as neutral as possible, straighten things up if you can, like if the character is in a bit of a pose, you have to do a little bit of work to clean it up. Uh, and just turn off the reference in the back to confirm if the overlook is something that you like. I haven't spent too much time on the side view, uh, to be honest, but it's a similar process. I throw in a, uh, like a picture, and you see that here in this case you have a little bit of a pose, like one leg is a bit more in the front, but I try to neutralize it a bit and remove the pose, uh, and I wasn't very accurate with it because I, uh, I'm thinking that I'll mostly be working from this reference, and uh, it's just a little bit of a guide, and yeah, I won't be sticking to this side too much. So. As you work on these things, keep these things in mind that you should also remember how much priority you want to give each of your references. Uh, finally, was there anything else I wanted to mention? Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, they're lined up, doesn't really need to be that way. All right, I think that's all I wanted to mention. So yeah, I have here my own little set of references and with this ready, we can now dive right into Blender. 
Uh, yeah, um, I think I mentioned it already, or I, I will be mentioning it in the part one when I get to record it, but you have already seen it, I hope. Uh, this, this tutorial is targeted at beginners. So, so we'll be using Blender uh, entirely, I hope, I, I'll try. Because that's the tool that you can get for free, and that's what's most requested. I will probably here and there make lots of notes uh, saying that this is not how I would do it as a professional, but I have decided for this series to focus on um, teaching it in a way that's very friendly to beginners. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind as we go ahead and let me just open a new scene so that I can show you every single step. Now I will also uh, quickly turn on an add-on that will let you see um, which buttons I'm pressing like here in the corner. Uh, just ignore this step. It's not in Blender by default as well. I downloaded this add-on from online, but just ignore this step. It's just for you to see what I'm doing. All right, so we're in a fresh uh, Blender scene now. And the first thing you almost always do is just select all objects uh, by pressing A and then delete them with the X short cut and then just confirm the delete option. Now we want to begin by bringing in our references and the easiest way to do it is just to drag and drop them in. Uh, let me quickly navigate to my folder. So I'm just taking this file and dragging it in and here you have like a plane in 3D space. That is uh, ready and good to go. All right, give me a second here I'll quickly go to my preferences and I need to change something because I'm not used to the current navigation method. Uh, you might be fine with how you can navigate and I should maybe talk about how to navigate in Blender but I'll switch to trackball and it's just a little bit of a different algorithm for rotation. Uh, if you you know you want to get really good at 3D maybe switch to it as well and get used to it. I don't know little advice on the side. But basically, as you can see here, middle mouse click lets you rotate the view, shift middle mouse shifts the view. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom or control and middle mouse to zoom as well. And there are a couple of uh, tricks that, you know, a, a lot of things that will save a lot of time. And I will take the time to mention these tricks and tips on the side as we go. It will take a lot of, you know, <laughs> it will go and, um, We'll go on a lot of tangents with, with that, but I hope that you can appreciate all the little insights. For example, the first one that I quickly want to mention is that when you rotate the camera like this and you get close to an, a certain axis, like this is like the front view, right? And then you hold Alt and release the middle mouse button first, then you can snap into any view like, like this. And that's way quicker than using other, other means of switching into a view. So learn this shortcut, it will be very useful. All right, back to what we're doing here. Uh, you can reset the position with Alt-G, can hit Alt-R to reset rotation and Alt-S to rotate this, uh, to reset the scale as well, although it doesn't have any rotation or scale on it, so nothing will change in this case. And the first thing we want to do is to line up uh, the front view with this image. So make sure it's the front view, select the image, go here into, in the, what is it, the property, what was the window called? Yeah, the properties window, this area is for properties, go into your image, uh, I, apparently that's the object data properties. <laughs> anyway, go into this panel here in this tab and uh, first activate the one with opacity, ob the opacity option here. You want to turn it down a little bit so that you can see the grid and then just hit G for grab uh, and move it to the middle. But you want to only move it horizontally. You can easily, while moving, snap the action to one of the axes by either pressing X, Y or Z. Uh, or you can press G and then, then uh, press middle mouse and hold it until you snap to the axis that you want to move it towards and then release middle mouse and it will stay snapped. So I'll line it up now and it should be perfectly centered. Uh, we can also move it up so that the legs are on the floor like this. And um, 
yeah, this site is good to go. Now go to the top view, you know, just navigate to the top and with this selected, hit Shift D to duplicate uh, this object. Now, when rotating it, I don't want it to go off axis like this. So if I was to do that, it's kind of somewhere uh, that's not very useful to me. Uh, instead, what I'll do is, um, you'll see there is this little cursor in the center. Uh, if you go to this, um, this feature here, you can also change the position of this three cursor. I believe if you're in this mode uh, with shift right click, you can also change the position of this. And you can use this as an origin for any transformation. Uh, by the way, you can hit Shift C to reset the cursor position, or you can open uh, the, the the right panel here with uh, N and go to uh, View, and then 3D cursor here is also the coordinates for that. You can change that also if you want. All right, so let's reset that with Shift C back to the center, and. Uh, Let's select one of our copies and then you want to hit uh, the period key on your keyboard uh, with which you can change the pivot point and switch now to 3D cursor as your pivot point. And then uh, you see even though the origin of the object is here, you can now rotate around the 3D cursor. And we'll do that but it's hard to get it exactly 90 degrees, right? So what you do here is you hold the control key and that lets you snap it uh, to, you know, five degree increments, I believe, yeah. Uh, this depends, however, on what setting is set here. You have it, can have it an increment, you can have it also snap to other things. So if you haven't changed anything here, it should be set to increment and so you can just snap it with degrees, increment of degrees. So now let's go to the right view and we'll just make sure that this is also lined up uh, so that it's somewhere in the center. There is no specific point, so just make it roughly. And there you go. We have our references set up. So um, you'll see they don't line up perfectly, but uh, throughout this tutorial I'll show you how to deal with the situations. But I'll not scale it to align the top here because I see that the eyes are aligned as they are. So that looks all right. Uh, one final thing that you could do if you want to is uh, to go again here to the properties and um, uncheck perspective for both. So then they will disappear. But as soon as you snap into a side view and it's not in perspective, if it's an orthographic view, so you can toggle here, front orthographic, uh, then only it will show up. So it doesn't get in the way when you look at it. 3D, but yeah, from the side views you can still see it. If you need to select these again at some point, you can always click in the in the outliner or snap into a view and then click on it. So with that, our scene is set up. Make sure you save it once, and I believe it would be a good idea to cut the video here. <laughs> Sorry, we haven't even started with the modeling just yet, but setup is important. And in the next part, we'll look into uh, the first steps when it comes to modeling.